Welcome to the local campaign here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Paul Nichols. This is the interactive debate for the riding of York Simcoe. And over the next half hour, we're going to hear from the candidates on a wide variety of issues on questions posed by myself and by citizens on tape. Each candidate will have an opportunity to give a one minute response to the question. And then we will throw the floor open to an open discussion that will last uh, approximately two minutes. I will, however, mention to the candidates that uh, if everybody talks at once, uh, nobody can hear anything, and so I will be uh, stepping in if that happens, or if somebody is, uh, shall we say, commandeering the, uh, the open discussion. Rogers TVA and did invite all of the candidates registered in the riding uh, for today's event, and the three candidates you have in front of you are the three candidates that obviously accepted our invitation. We did a draw for a speaking order prior to uh, this particular uh, broadcast start. And uh, for the opening statements, which will be one minute, uh, the speaking order will be uh, as you see on your screen. And I will introduce the candidates uh, each, uh, at each time. We're going to start now with Peter Van Loan for the Conservative Party. Thank you very much. It's a great honor serving as Member of Parliament for York Simcoe. Since I was first elected, I've made my top priority being delivering on an improved quality of life for local residents. Let's look at some of the results. We've delivered on the first ever Lake Simcoe Cleanup Fund. Over 200 projects have been funded and the quality of the lake water and ecosystem is already improving. It's one of a raft of changes we've made to help the lake ecosystem. We've also delivered on important infrastructure for our communities, things like a new rec centre and a new library in, uh, east, in uh, Bradford, West Gullenbury, and of course improvements to the East Gullenbury Rec Centre. We, but the changes that I am most proud of are the changes that have been affecting the lives of ordinary families. We've done this primarily through leaving more money in your pocket, doing things like cutting the GST, introducing a sports and fitness tax credit, increasing the basic personal exemption so that you have more money tax free. Our approach is a low tax plan that delivers on balanced budgets and more money in your pocket. That's the way to go for a better quality of life for you. Thank you. Next to speak will be Sylvia Gurl from the NDP party. In 10 years, the Conservatives have betrayed everything they claimed to stand for. They spat on veterans, ignored seniors, made a bigger mockery of the Senate than even the Liberals, and now they're turning on farmers. They squandered the economic advantage our banking regulations gave us and the international reputation that we have enjoyed since World War II. And for what? To sell a bit more oil. Peter Van Loan was right in the middle, Harper's left-hand man called the Bullion Parliament. I've been fighting for the people in this riding for 28 years writing letters to the editor, fundraising, helping fight the Ministry of the Environment over the smelter, all while owning a business in Sutton and raising a family in Keswick. I'm proud to belong to a party where the MPs do have a voice. I'll be able to say, this is what we need for York Simcoe and not that, and have it matter. We have an amazing platform for positive change and unlike the Liberals, we have a track record of following through in Parliament. Thank you. Next to speak is Sean Tanaka for the Liberal Party. Thank you. Canada is a great country and deserves better leadership. This election is about change and our future, and Canadians know that better is always possible. Liberals have a detailed, sustainable, costed plan that will make urgent investments in the middle class and those seeking to join it, and in things that will improve your lives now. Things like jobs, public transit, affordable housing, childcare, innovation, training, and our environment. Mr. Harper's plan has failed. While middle-class Canadians struggle to make ends meet, the Conservatives give billions in benefits to the wealthiest few and do nothing to help the average Canadians to get ahead. After a decade of Stephen Harper, only the Liberals are offering new leadership and a new plan that will deliver real change so that all Canadians have a chance to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like now to direct your attention to this taped question. Hi, my name is John Taylor. I'm the Deputy Mayor of Newmarket and the Co-Chair of the Human Services Planning Board of York Region. Uh, in York Region, housing affordability is a major issue for our residents. And I'd like to ask the candidates in this federal election a question, which is, 
Do you and your party support a national housing strategy for Canada? And will you commit to pursuing that both personally as at a party if elected in this first term of office? Thank you. All right. First to answer this question will be Sylvia Girl. Thank you. Um, this is a very, a, a very personal importance to me as I've worked with people in precarious life situations for years. This is how, actually, I was recruited to run for the federal NDP because I thought provincial matters, um, which housing is, um, were more, had more impact on everyday citizens' lives. And Jack Layton said, do you know we don't have a national housing strategy? And that convinced me to run. Now, th the NDP has a very solid plan, not only to create um, uh, funding, stable funding to municipalities for affordable housing, but we are developing, uh, working with First Nations and seniors and all the vulnerable sectors in developing a national housing plan for over 30,000 new uh, affordable houses. The, the, the average person is being priced out of the housing market and with a free market, this is going to create more and more pockets of people that are paying more than half their income in rent or housing. Thank you, Ms. Tanaka, you're next. Yes, um, far too many Canadians are being priced out of home ownership. A Liberal Party will have a national housing strategy. We have $20 billion being invested in social infrastructure that will include a national housing strategy and provide affordable quality housing. We'll also provide tax incentives to expand affordable rental housing. We will conduct an inventory of all the available federal lands and buildings that could be repurposed um, and make some of these available at low cost for the affordable housing in communities where there's the pressing need. So a Liberal Party does have a national housing strategy. They also have it costed a plan of $20 billion to social infrastructure and making sure that all Canadians have a right to affordable quality housing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van Loan. I'm proud of the results that we've delivered for housing in York Simcoe. We've delivered literally hundreds of units, uh, the expansion of Miller Park, uh, the expansion of the seniors housing in Mount Auburn and of course a new building that just opened in Keswick are all examples of where we have worked in partnership with municipalities and with the province to deliver housing to meet very real needs for those who are most challenged. But we've also uh, in the Conservative Party put forward a plan that encourages home ownership. For example, Canadians can withdraw a significant amount of money from their uh, RRSPs tax-free in order to have a down payment on a home. We're proposing to increase that amount in this election campaign. Similarly, we're proposing a new permanent home renovation tax credit for those who want to buy uh, homes that require a bit of uh, work and improvement, which I think is what a lot of people look to for their startup homes. We're going to be uh, giving them an opportunity to have a permanent home renovation tax credit. In fact, that would be very strong for our local economy and will help people with their home ownership, home ownership needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's open uh, discussion at this point. If anybody would like to add, answer, add something to what they said or challenge any of the other candidates. I forgot to say the most important thing about the national housing strategy and that, that is that we would like to enshrine um, housing as a right. This is a, a, something that's been neglected for some time. The housing retrofits are a really great idea, especially when they um, help with um, insulation with energy uh, use reduction but they don't go far enough in the sense that if you don't have the money to um, do the renovation and to pay for your housing, then that's not really going to help. There are people that are priced quite entirely out of the market and we see them moving farther north as farmland is being sold off for parcels um, uh, for houses, for housing developments. Right now we have no national housing strategy. The federal right. conservatives have walked away from that leadership position and haven't taken a leadership role when in the past 10 years they had that position to do it and they mm -hmm. haven't. And so in affordable housing it also has to include low income Canadians that need help with social assistance and social housing. I think that the conservative government is also in the process of ending rent geared to income support for co-ops and other social housing. And this is an yes. inexcusable. Many of in those, uh, those co contracts are set to expire. The subsidies are set to expire on the federal level and we need to pick it up again. The NDP has a commitment to um, re reinstate those um, subsidies. Uh, we also have to think about how we house people who are vulnerable. Um, 
simply building uh, housing like and getting the private sector involved in that um, is is a very doable thing. Uh, Ontario is the only province that has downloaded the responsibility for creating housing to the municipalities, and that's where the the uh, stable municipal funding comes in. That's right, also we'll where the alone. liberal. I, I think this will be uh, the last I comment. Do, I do want to point to the results. We've delivered real results in the community. I talked about the hundreds of units, hundreds of units of real housing for seniors and vul vulnerable individuals that we have provided, and I've talked about our housing plan from allowing people to withdraw more from their RRSPs tax-free for a down payment on a first-time uh, home buy to our proposed permanent home renovation tax credit that will help them out. Seniors already will, as of January 1st, have the opportunity to benefit from a home renovation tax credit for things like no-slip flooring or other improvements to allow them to stay in their homes longer, another important way of meeting their needs. But I can tell you from my previous life, when I used to be uh, out practicing law, I was very involved in helping deliver social housing literally thousands of units and one of my clients was a supportive housing coalition and we focused on the homelessness challenge of the mentally ill I'm very proud that our government has picked up that challenge with a housing first strategy that sees that the first step to getting those people on track and off okay. the streets is getting them into housing thank you we have gotta wrap it up we're going on to uh, question two and this will be from me so uh, we're talking about families and child benefits when asked what worries the average middle-class voter today it's being able to provide their families and afford their life without being strapped. Outline what you feel is the most important initiative of your party to help middle class families. And the first to deal with this question will be Sean Tanaka. Well, the most important thing I think is making sure that we get more money back in the pockets of middle class families. The Liberal Party has a, a priority to particularly that, low and middle income families. We would be pro providing a bigger tax-free monthly automatic check to uh, families. We'll also be um, making sure that that is bigger by not sending those checks to millionaires just because they happen to have children. I find it curious that both the Conservatives and the NDP in particular are um, proponents of moving that forward by just by the mere fact that the families happen to have children. We want to make sure that it's families that need that extra bit of help, that need that extra bit of push, that they have the money in their pocket for that difficult task of raising families in our society today. Thank you. Next to answer the question would be Mr. Van Loan. The best way to help families is by leaving more money in their pockets and we've done that unambiguously with a series of changes that have been opposed by the Liberal Party and the NDP. What have those been? A new universal child care benefit. They fought it, we delivered it, and now we've increased it to $160 a month for children under six, and we've introduced a new one for older children of $60 a month. We've also introduced a sports and fitness tax credit to help families with the challenging and increasing costs of keeping kids involved in sports activities. We've also recently doubled that. We introduced an arts and fitness tax credit, as well as a range of other changes and I've talked about the home renovation tax credit we're proposing, all of which will help families make ends meet. And you've got to ask yourself, if you're faced with liberals telling you they want to cut your taxes, but not everybody, that some people are going to pay more taxes, and the Conservative Party that says we believe unambiguously in delivering tax cuts, the tax cuts that those liberals voted against every time, you've got to ask yourself, who do you really trust to deliver to lower taxes to Canadians? And I put it to you, you look at the track record, support the people who have always voted to give you those tax reductions. Ms. Girl? I think the real is issues facing um, all the people of this riding, the ones that are the middle class that are feeling squeezed, is that, that there's been a downward spiral in, in uh, uh, conditions. Uh, prices of, of goods have gone up. Prices of fuel has gone up. We live a paradox where if the, the oil sands are to be profitable, then we all pay more for heating oil and at the pump. In this riding, which is as dense as it is, there's no reason that we don't have better transit. There should be trains running all the time. So for the commuter from this riding, that whose, whose time and money is taken up by driving to work every day because they need that little bit of extra income, the biggest help I think we may create for them is with the $15 a day daycare, capped at $15 a day. We need to have wages that are going up rather than stagnating, which is the real problem for today's um, middle-class family. 
a few hundred dollars here or there is not going to make a difference. Not the difference okay. we really need. We need to move on. I'm going to throw this to an open discussion for maybe one input from each person again. So have at it. Who would like to speak to it? Well, I'll simply return to the question of who do you trust on tax cuts and who's really telling you the truth. The Liberal Party is also proposing a payroll tax increase on every typical worker of about $1,000. That'll be $1,000 for this enhancement to the Canada Pension Plan or a new Ontario Pension Plan in concert with Kathleen Wynne. And that's matched by another $1,000 from the employer. So you've got to ask yourself, if employers are hit with that additional $2,000 cost, how much are they going to do in new hiring? And if a family has to pay an additional $1,000, that's their marginal after-tax income. $1,000 at the margin makes a huge difference in a community like ours in York Simcoe, where that's, for many people, that's the money that represents their opportunity to get ahead, I'm to improve their standard of life, to improve their living conditions. And that's why I think it's one of those hidden taxes that the Liberals aren't telling you about that they're planning on delivering. Okay, Ms. Girl. I'm glad you're pointing out that, that there's very little margin for a lot of people. What about those people for whom you made it easier in 2012 budget to launder their money, essentially, um, sending it uh, overseas and then bringing it back without ever paying tax on it? There are subsidies to a whole bunch of oil companies um, and basically a plan that's going to lead us farther and farther down a road from which there is no return. I have to we step in because all the, tr our economic the track assets. record's really the opposite. We put additional funding into cracking down on tax evasion, and we've also eliminated any subsidies well, that used to exist for I'm oil sorry, companies but I've under read the previous the government. Of the Senate, where a senator was talking about the $170 billion that are laundered that way every year. I'm, I'm, the, it is in the record. Now, uh, I don't think that. Um, cutting the 180 taxes, which is some number out of the air, I don't really, I've never heard any substantiation of what those actual things are other than a GST cut. But GST cuts help people who have more money to spend. Those that have less money to spend barely notice the difference. Those living on, on that $1,000 margin that don't have the money to uh, have their children play sports to get the tax credit back. Um, if you don't pay taxes. It's fully refundable now. Um, Can I jump in? I'm yeah. I, okay, yes. so I, I just wanted to speak to, to this idea of um, the, first of all, I, th I find it curious that Peter Van Loon is, is talking about uh, fitness tax and an art tax. He's not talking about low income families. Those are families that can afford those programming, can afford hockey lessons, can afford artistic lessons. And that's not what we're talking about. The Liberal Party is talking about getting money back into the pockets of people that need it, not the people that don't need that extra bit of support. I speak to families all across this uh, community when I'm knocking on doors, and they're telling me that um, they're willing to be able to pay a little bit more so that we can have inclusivity and success. But I also want to speak to the one issue about the pensions, because I can't just leave that sitting there. So first of all, when we're talking about this um, supposed pension okay. tax, that's not what that is. The, it's not a tax when that's something that people get back. And I find it very curious that P Peter Van Loon would bring up we've got pensions a, we've got to wrap when up. he has passed in the House of Commons that everybody else in this riding has to wait until they're 67 okay. in order to get pension. But he Thank himself you, Sean, will wait up. till 65 and at a very handsome okay. pension at that at $2.3 million. I, I hear you. I'd like to draw your attention. We have a street question from one of our citizens, please. Hi, my name is Michael and I work in the financial industry. My question for the candidates is how does your party plan to fund government initiatives and what would the impact be at both an individual and a corporate level? First to tackle this question will be Mr. Van Loon. Well, I'm very proud that our government has delivered a balanced budget and has come out of the most dramatic global economic downturn in my time, being able to deliver the important government services that people want while putting more tax, more tax dollars back into people's pockets and balancing the budget all at once. But I want to go back to something that my liberal friend uh, uh, mentioned in her question. She was saying that those who have their kids in hockey are rich. Those who have their kids in arts programs are rich. That's not the people she's talking about helping with her middle class tax cut, she said. Those are the people they call rich. And this is why I say you always have to be careful when liberals talk about 
helping some and then taxing others more because you'll be surprised to find out how soon you become one of the rich when you find that in your own life you're struggling trying to get ahead and uh, make a better living for you and your family. The fact is we're going to help all Canadians and have helped all Canadians with lower taxes for all of them. That's the way we help everybody get ahead. That is the Canadian way. Ms. Girl. Um, our platform has been fully costed and along with closing huge tax loopholes, we want to cut subsidies to oil companies and banks who do not need it. Those are truly the people that do not need the large subsidies. Who are the tax cuts for? Who is not paying their fair share? That's where we're going because the Conservative plan has very clearly failed. It has failed to retain jobs in Canada. It has not encouraged business with value added here. Um, where our products get turned into um, products that we can then set, sell to the rest of the world rather than just pulling up, ripping out, digging up and selling to the highest bidder. We, we will be encouraging innovation and becoming leaders of the world in that sort of business, not just oil. Ms. Tanaka. Well, the Liberal Party will be investing in the middle class and making sure that the middle class and those aspiring to it will have more money in their pockets. One of the things that we're most proud of is investing in Canadians and investing in their future. $60 billion in infrastructure um, investments will make sure that we kickstart the economy. And so my friend uh, Peter Van Loan had talked about weathering an economic crisis. And that's true because it, we delivered as Liberals 10 consecutive surpluses, which were then quickly followed by eight consecutive deficits by the Conservative Party. So with the Conservative Party, you're getting deficits with no plan. With the Liberal Party, we have, we have been uh, transparent and open about the short deficit that we would be running for three years in order to make sure that we build ambitiously, that we create jobs and we have investment in social infrastructure and green infrastructure that our economy and our country desperately needs after 10 years of Stephen Harper. Open floor. I'll just uh, pick up on the question of debts and deficit. Uh, the fact is Canada came out of the recent global economic downturn with the strongest fiscal position of any of the major developed economies. And we did a good job with our stimulus because when it was done, we shut it down and that returned us to balance quickly. The Liberals and the NDP in contrast are giving you proposals that will result in significant deficits. Liberals up, are up front about 10 billion of that. We calculate that they're really going to end up at somewhere around 30 billion. And the NDP, they're saying they're going to balance the budget in year one. Well, guess what? That's because year one's almost over. But by the end of their fourth year, they're going to have a $34 billion deficit. If you put those kinds of deficits in place, that means that you're putting a huge burden on the economy for years to come. When I was trade minister, people said the reason they liked investing in Canada and had confidence investing in Canada because the fiscal situation was predictable. They knew that the lower taxes on job creating investors would stay in place and remain low so that job creation could be done with certainty and that they didn't face future tax increases rising out of those deficits. Deficits are a future tax, a future tax on our children, a tax on future generations. It's simply unfair and what's more, it's disastrous for the economy. We've seen the damage right now, it's Mr. done in Peter Europe Van and elsewhere. Is, we can't afford that here. Ta telling stories at this point because we are being very upfront with our plan, with our plan for investment in Canadians and investment in infrastructure. And we don't have confidence, Mr. Peter Van Loon. You're saying that we have confidence in the Conservative Party, and that's not what we have. What we have is a desperation for change. People want change in this coming election because they don't have confidence in you. And in the, in the, the comment about rich and, and, and poor, you are speaking to a certain portion of Canadian society. We are speaking to all Canadians and making sure that everybody has an equal chance for success. Right now, you're st stacking the deck at the top and privileging few. We want to make sure that everybody has an equal chance for success. I, I need to say something about balanced budgets. Um, the NDP, when they came into Saskatchewan, Tommy Douglas not only brought in public Medicare, but first paid down the debt. There, we have the best record in terms of balanced budgets of all the parties. Now, there is a reason, that is the reason that we were saying as the NDP, in the coming year, we will balance the budget and continue to do so as much as possible. The, the economy did 
as well as it did, not because of the Conservatives, but despite the dismantling of the regulations that they were already doing. They, we, had, we have the best banking regulations, uh, much better than, than the United States, but the countries that suffered the most were praised before, um, several years before that, for the right-wing deregulation that your government supports. And continue, we're, the we're real need job creators are, are the small businesses, and we will invest in them they, they create 78% of new jobs. Okay. This will be the last question that we will be able to fit into our half hour. It's a red question, so it will come from me. And we'll give you one minute each, and then we're, we're out. Okay, just so you know. Talk about the unique issues facing your riding, the riding of York Simcoe, and what you plans you have to address them. In particular, please include how your voice specifically will be heard in Parliament. First to deal with this question will be Sylvia Girl. Well, as I stated earlier, um, I really have um, housing as a personal desire. I, I would like everyone in this country to be assured of stable and safe housing. But as much as that, I want to make sure that our water supply is secure. We, um, in this riding, the biggest issue is the fact that we are growing extremely quickly and the infrastructure needs to be there to support that. So I would also like to make sure that we get a good, um, if possible, rapid transit system, but definitely a better transit system than we have now because I see so many cars driving down the 404 in, and, and now that the 404 has come up higher, that's even more extreme uh, with one driver in the car. The, there is no point in having a clean Lake Simcoe without a planet. Yes. And thank you very much for having me here. I appreciate the time. Sean Tanaka, next. Sure. As a geography professor, I'm particularly proud of the Liberal policy for $60 billion in infrastructure investments. It's the most significant infrastructure investment in Canadian history. And I think in a riding like ours that is just ready to grow, bursting at the seams, we have a choice between either just simply having houses or having an investment in infrastructure that will make sure that we have the roads, the transit, the jobs, all of the aspects that make a community livable and our quality of life higher. So the Liberal Party in their infrastructure investment, I think will make a substantial contribution to York Simcoe in particular, as well as to the country as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Van The most important challenge for our community is ensuring that ordinary families have more money in their pockets for their needs, for their dreams, to build a brighter future. I believe that we could, should continue on that path of doing it. The Liberals, they tell you that they want to tax the rich more and help out others. But then we hear today that the Liberals believe that if you have your kids in hockey, they're rich. If you have your kids in soccer, they're rich. That's exactly what you said when you dismissed that sports and fitness tax credit. And of course, uh, when you treat those people as the rich, there's where you see the hidden agenda, whether it be the $1,000 payroll tax on employment insurance, that they're on, the C on the pensions that they're looking at, or other tax increases. The fact is, the Liberal Party plans to claw back the universal child care benefit and family income splitting and continue to hit you with tax increases you simply can't afford. I believe my biggest challenge is to ensure that families have the means to get ahead and build a brighter future for the family, and that's what I will continue to work to deliver in Ottawa on your behalf. I'd like to thank the candidates for attending the uh, debate today and wish you best of luck on Election Day. More information can be found at rogerstv.com. Look us up and vote on the October 19th election. Thanks for watching.